What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 14.5 beta 6 to register developers and soon to public beta testers and this comes just a little over a week after the release of beta 5. Now in addition to iOS, we also got iPadOS 14.5 beta 6, watchOS 7.4 beta 6, macOS Big Sur 11.3 beta 6, and of course tvOS 14.5 beta 6 but this video is all about ios 14.5 beta 6 and ipad os as well so let's go ahead and just jump right into it so first off you can see the size of this update came in around 255.7 megabytes on my iphone 12 here so pretty small update a little bit bigger than beta 5 but still a small update overall as expected for a sixth beta so let's go ahead and check out the build number for this update so if we go to our settings general about 14.5 you can see there the build number is 18e 5194a so once again another a build number that is back to back to back a build so we are very very close to the final and in my opinion this is going to be the final beta release before the rc but we'll talk about that near the end of this video and if you go down to the modem firmware down here you can see it remains at 1.62 0.11 so no change there in the modem firmware so now what's new here in beta 6 and we actually have a few pretty major changes here in this update so we didn't really see anything major in beta 5 it was mostly just a bug fix update but it seems that apple is waiting until supposedly the final beta here before releasing two of probably 14.5's biggest features overall so if we go into the photos here, I did download this photo from Apple's website for this new feature that's included here in 14.5 beta six. And this is actually a recalibration tool for devices with less than ideal battery capacity. So Apple is actually building this in to iOS here in the battery health section. So if you go to your settings, and then of course you go down to battery and then to battery health, that little notification there that little pane would show up right above here if you have less than ideal maximum capacity you can see it shows right there for a device with 88 percent capacity so apple says ios 14.5 coming later this spring which is interesting to note by the way includes an update where the battery health reporting system will recalibrate maximum battery capacity and peak performance capability on iphone 11 so the iphone 11 series symptoms of this bug include unexpected battery drain behavior or in a small number of instances reduced peak performance capability. This inaccurate battery health reporting does not reflect an issue with actual battery health. So it seems like this tool was mainly just to have more accurate readings on the iPhone 11 series. Now, I'm not sure if this is just a bug with all the iPhone 11s, the 11, 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max, but it seems that way, at least based on this article. So maybe it'll come to other devices in the future, but basically this is just going to help have a more accurate reading on your battery health inside of your settings which is good because a lot of people probably replace their battery when maybe they didn't need to on the iphone 11 so apple is trying to fix that with the recalibration tool here in 14.5 and apple also notes here that this process might take a few weeks so this process of recalibrating could take a few weeks and it will show you in settings when it's actually recalibrating your battery so that is a pretty interesting change there when it comes to battery health in ios 14 0.5 so i'll keep you guys updated if that comes out for other devices or if it's just always going to be for the iphone 11 series but anyways we also have another major change here in 14.5 beta 6 and this was actually reported on by TechCrunch because it is pretty major especially with the world we live in today so you'll get what i mean here in a second so if you go into our settings and go to siri and search and then go to siri voice you will notice some changes here so quite a few changes let me pull up 14.5 beta 5 over here on the left just to show you guys what has changed if you go to siri and search and then to siri voice right there you can see that over on the left we're going to have beta 5 in every previous version then we have beta 6 of 14.5 on the right so first of all it no longer says accent and gender and now says variety and voice so gender is removed in favor of voice and instead of saying accent it says variety and also we have two new siri voices so you can see now instead of just saying male and female it just has voice one through four and the two new voices are i'll let you guys hear them so voice one is just this hi i'm siri choose the voice you'd like me to use voice two is this hi i'm siri choose the voice you'd like me to use voice three is this hi i'm siri choose the voice you'd like me to use and voice four is this. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. 
that's probably the one you're most familiar with. So I believe voice two and three are the two new ones here in 14.5 beta 6. I actually really like them as well. So these new voices seem a lot more personable and a lot more kind of updated, a lot more modern. So I'll play them once again, voice two. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. So two cool new voices. Also in the setup selection, you no longer have it default to the American female voice. So now when you set up your phone for the first time, it's not going to default to the female voice. It's gonna let you actually pick which voice you want for Siri. It's not gonna to default to anything so that you have to pick exactly what you want to hear. And this new beta update also improves Siri voices in Ireland, Russia, and Italy to add Apple's neural text to speech. So some improvements overall to Siri in addition to the two new voices. Now, beta six, those are pretty much the main changes, the features and changes that I found in this update. I went throughout the settings and couldn't really find anything else. I'm guessing that this is pretty much the final bug fix update, but those were two features that Apple has been waiting on to push to the final beta, just really close to the release. So as far as anything else goes, I have not seen anything else new. Of course, I will have a follow-up video coming on beta six if I do find anything else new here inside the software. If anybody finds something in the code on social media or on 9to5Mac or Mac rumors or something like that, I will let you guys know. So. As far as bug fixes go, there is actually one bug fix I wanted to talk about, and that is inside of the music queue. So I've talked about this quite a few times, and when you press shuffle on a playlist or an album, sometimes the first song you're not actually able to move in the queue, and that was the case on beta five as well. I thought it was fixed, but it wasn't. So if I just go and press shuffle right here, and then go to the queue, let me get out of this, and if I go to the queue, you can see right there, live that we don't have the option to move the first song right there. You have to move the second song or you have to go out of the queue and back into it to see the three little lines there indicating that you can move this song in the queue. But in beta six, that has been fixed. So you can see it works there. If I go out of here and then go into an album and play it right away, you can see that it shows up right away every single time up there indicating that I can move this throughout the queue. So that is a bug that really annoyed me throughout the entire iOS 14 beta stages. Every single beta had that bug, and now it has finally been fixed here in beta six. Also, the buttons on the AirPods Max have the sound back for good, it seems, so nothing has been reverted. The sounds are working properly on the AirPods Max, which is great because that was also a very annoying bug in beta four. Now, unfortunately, the loud notification bug is still present here in beta six. I tested it out just before recording this video and it's still back. So unfortunately, I don't know if that's really ever gonna be fixed because that's been there since iOS 14.0, but I did just want to mention it just because people always leave comments about the loud notification bug. And also here in beta six, Apple didn't say anything about the green tint bug. And also people that had this previously said that is still not fixed here in beta six. So at this point, like I said, we may have to wait till iOS 15 or something like that before we actually see a fix for green tint, if at all. Now, when it comes to the performance of iOS 14.5 beta six, everything seems about the same so far to me as it did in beta five. But if we go to our Geekbench scores here, I'm gonna run a quick Geekbench test. I did run one right after this install, but now that I've been using it for a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and run a fresh new CPU benchmark test here and see how it compares to beta five. Although once again, this doesn't tell the full story because day-to-day -day usage is going to be pretty similar to beta five here on beta six. I'm not really expecting a huge jump because once again, we have back to back to back a builds. So they're all pretty good. They're all gonna run pretty good on your device. So we got a 1584 on the single core and a 3863 on the multi-core. So that is lower than beta five. As you can see there, we had a 1596 streak going and this kind of broke that. Of course it was earlier than these ones as well. We had a 1584 versus a 1596 and a 3863 versus a 4079. So a downgrade in terms of the overall performance according to Geekbench here on beta six compared to beta five, but once again, I would not expect that to impact your day-to-day -day usage. That should be pretty much the same in my opinion, but I will let you guys know in my follow-up video if that holds true. And when it comes to battery life, of course, it's way too early to talk about battery life yet just because I did just install this. As far as beta five goes, beta five battery life was actually better than beta four for me. I had a hard time determining that within the first few days, but after using it for over a week now, I can say it was a little bit better than beta four but when it comes to beta six versus beta five, I will not expect any change in battery life. So don't update expecting 
a change in battery life, which I'm sure most of you guys aren't updating anyways, hoping for better battery life if you're on these beta. So anyways, that's pretty much it for iOS 14.5 beta 6. Now let's talk about when we can expect the RC build and the final version of iOS 14.5. So as I predicted last week, we would see beta 6 this week. That came true. And if my previous prediction, my original prediction here on the channel holds true again, that would mean that we would see iOS 14.5 RC next week, most likely on, it could be early in the week or later in the week. It's hard to say because Apple does release the RC builds on any time of the week. I mean, they release them on Friday sometimes, sometimes on Monday. So it's really hard to say when Apple will release the RC build, but I would expect the RC build on the week of the 5th and then most likely the final on the week of the 12th, possibly on April 13th. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that on Apple's website here, when they talked about iOS 14.5, it does say 14.5 coming later this spring. So it's hard to say, it's hard to really decipher what Apple means by that. I mean, April, the April 13th is in the spring technically. So it says later in the spring though, which is pretty interesting. But I mean, I don't see any way that Apple continues to not really delay, but just not release iOS 14.5. I mean, after three straight A builds and a sixth beta on something that's been in beta for well over a month now, I mean, I think it's hard to not release 14.5 sometime in early to mid April. So with that in mind, I think that we still see the final release on the week of the 12th, most likely on April 13th. And that could also be the day that we see maybe not an Apple event, but maybe a press release or something like that. It's hard to say, especially with the worldwide developers conference just getting announced earlier in the week. It's hard to say if we even see any type of announcement for an April event. It's you know really up in the air right now just because it's only rumors and leaks at this point. There's nothing confirmed. So we'll have to wait and see on that. But yeah, guys, let me know what you think about iOS 14.5. When do you think we're going to see the final? Let me know your predictions down there in the comments below. I really like seeing what you guys have to say as well. And of course, if you find anything else new in 14.5 beta 6, let me know in a comment and let me know overall how this version or the previous version has been running for you on your device. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss when 14.5 gets released to the public, along with a lot more videos and coverage on upcoming Apple products. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.